Anyways, a very good morning to everyone. So today I'm going to introduce you one of the generic queries and its solutions. Guys, whenever we are asked to design the pipeline script, we start writing it and we mostly prefer to write it in Groovy language because Groovy language is the foundation of Jenkins pipeline. Now, in order to write the best pipeline, we start taking help of internet and that's how we visit several official documentations. We visit Jenkins official documentations. We visit Groovy official documentations or taking help some official blocks as well. Now here the problem arises. Here the problem comes into the pictures. The problem comes when we start mixing the syntax. When I say start mixing syntax, it means that when we start using a scripted pipeline syntax into the declarative pipeline syntax or we start using declarative pipeline syntax into the scripted pipeline syntax that consumes a lot of time and it wastes our effort because the problem comes in such situations. Guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the best practices in writing the best pipeline and after this tutorial you will be completely distinguished between declarative pipeline and a scripted pipeline and accordingly you can write and adhere the best practices of pipeline. Hello guys my name is Avinash and you're watching the learning destinations. If you haven't yet subscribed my channel then please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. So now I'm going to introduce you the difference between the declarative pipeline and the scripted pipeline. The first term is declarative pipeline is recently added with Jenkins pipeline and it provides more simplified and option syntax. It means that guys previously Jenkins is only supported by scripted pipeline but declarative pipeline approach has been recently added with the Jenkins pipeline. The basic expression and statement which are valid in declarative pipeline follow the same rules as Groovy syntax. It means that the steps which we defined under the declarative pipeline, that particular syntax is the same as the Groovy syntax. It means that we can use the Groovy syntax inside the declarative pipeline. All valid declarative pipeline must be enclosed within a, pipe, within a pipeline block and the example is like this. It means that it is saying that Whatever the steps we, which we are going to define here inside the pipeline that must be enclosed within these curly braces. It means that it should start with the pipeline, right? And after that, we need to define here all the steps and then we need to close this curly braces. And that's how we can define it as a declarative pipeline. Now let's move towards the scripted pipeline. So unlike declarative, scripted, scripted pipeline is effectively general purpose domain specific language. Guys, we call scripted pipeline as a DSL also and DSL full form is domain specific language. Okay. However, the, the declarative pipeline is called as a declarative language. Scripted pipeline users can use all functionality provided by Groovy language. Hence, it very expressive and flexible tool for pipeline. Guys, if you remember in the starting of this tutorial, I have already mentioned that like uh, Groovy is the foundations of Jenkins pipeline. And that is the reason that whenever the first time the pipeline introduces, a scripted pipeline introduces, it means that it, it completely supports the Groovy language. It means whatever the syntax coming under the Groovy language, you can simply use all those syntax inside the scripted pipeline. It is serially executed from top of Jenkins downwards, like most traditional script in Groovy or other language. It means that in Groovy also, we execute the steps from top to bottom. It is not like that we can execute from bottom to top or from middle to bottom or middle to top. It is simply we can only execute top to bottom. That pro, that facility is available in Groovy and so do, so do that the same facility available in a scripted pipeline as well. It means that there is a two command. One you are installing yum install httpd and yum install vim. And the yum install HTTP you are writing first and secondly you are writing yum install vim. So firstly the HTTP package will be installed and after that the vim package will be installed. It means that from top to bottom. And in the previous slide we have seen that the syntax of the pipeline and here this is the syntax that how we can design the scripted pipeline or we can write the scripted pipeline. So if you can measure the difference between the declarative pipeline and scripted pipeline. Right, it's pretty much easy. The scripted, the declarative pipeline 
is starting with here the pipeline instead of no node you need to mention here the uh, the pipeline and then you need to open and close curly braces but but in terms of scripted pipeline you need to use the node and then you need to define open close curly braces and that's how you can simply identify the script whether it is written in a declarative or it is written in a scripted now I'm going to introduce you the typical sections in declarative pipeline. Okay, so this is the structure which I am going to show you. So whenever you write the pipeline script, right? So you need to firstly write the uh, write it down the pipeline, then open close curly braces, and after pipeline you need to define the agent. Guys, you don't need to worry because I am going to explain each and everything one by one. That what is the agent? What is the stages? Right, and inside the stages, then you need to define the stage, and after that, then you need to define the steps, and under the steps, you can define the command. And the overall syntax, if we say, it is looking like this. So as I mentioned, the firstly you need to define the pipeline, then open and close curly braces. Now all the steps comes under this particular open and close curly braces. So after that, you need to define the agent. Right here, I have defined the none, and I will explain you what is the meaning of when we keep agent as a none. And then we need to define the stages. After that, we need to define the stage. We need to uh, give the message here that this stage is particular belonging to which task. As of now, you can see that this is saying that example build. It means that this stage belongs to the build part. Okay. Then after that, I will also explain you that why I am writing here agent two times here because in this structure I have written here the agent after pipeline you need to define the agent but here I have written two times here after the pipeline and exactly under the agent also guys this is the optional you can use the agent at both place uh, means entire pipeline also or on the stage level as well right then after that I have defined the steps and under the steps I have defined the commands now let me explain the sections explanations in declarative pipeline so now i am going to introduce you the sections which we have seen here the agent stages stage steps right so now i am going to explain you one by one all those and firstly i am taking the sections agent so the agent section specifies where the entire pipeline or a specific stage will execute in the jenkins environment depending on where the agent section is placed guys as I mentioned that the agent is particular where we run all the commands. Let's suppose that you need to install the Docker and something you are passing the command yum install Docker. Okay, so you are defining the agent. It means that the Docker will be installing on the target node through this particular agent. It means that whatever the actions we are performing under the script, right, that all actions is going through the agent on the target node. And that is what I have mentioned here. Okay, the section must be defined at the top level inside the pipeline block, but you can define on the stage level also, and that is optional. Guys, if you remember in the previous slide, I have shown you that there is an agent mentioned under the stage level also, right? That is the meaning of that is done. That is the optional, and you can execute the agent on the stage level or when you define under the pipeline sections right on the top after the pipeline that means that that agent will be valid for entire your pipeline script and if you define the agent under the stage it means that that agent is only valid for that stage and something the syntax is like the this one the pipeline right and open and close curly braces and after that you need to define the agent now agent section supports different types of parameters. First, if you are aware and you, if you have already written the pipeline in declarative pipeline, right? You put agent any, right? In the previous slide, there is an agent and we have written any. So what does it mean? It means that it executes the pipeline on any available agent. It means whatever the app agent is available right we can configure the multiple agent guys if you want to know how to configure the multiple agent let me know i will make the separate video on that so in such a way if your pi pipeline has many agents right and you just put any it means that whatever the agent is available the command will be executed through that particular agent 
when we mention none, it means that no global agent is allocated for entire pipeline and each stage sections will have to its own agent sections. When we mention the level, it executes the pipeline. It means that when we say agent level, it means that we have particular agent which we set, uh, we have set some label on that particular agent. So our pipeline will use that particular agent which has that particular label and then it execute the pipeline. Then there is options called node that is also behaves the same as, as agent but it provides some additional options such as custom workspace and this is an example like we define agent and we can define agent as a label any but it additionally provides some options like you can see it is additionally providing label name as well. Still continuing with the sections explanation this is the declarative pipeline. Then after that comes the next sections comes stages. It contains sequence of a stage and where the bulk of work is defined. It means that after whenever we design the pipeline after that we write the agent and then we write the stages and under the stages we define various stage and that is what it is written that it performs the bulk of work which is defined under the stages and the script will be something looking like that. So we first define pipeline open close curly braces then after that we define agent and under the agent we define the after that we define stages and then finally we define the stage it means the bulk of task it means that there are four stages and four stages we can refer as a bulk of task which we all perform under the stages. Then steps comes. The step sections define a series of one or more steps, right? And this is the example you can see that. So we have defined pipeline open close curly braces, then agent, then stages. Under the stage, we have defined the stage example, and under the stage, we have defined the steps. And the first steps we are printing, we are echoing hello world. I am still continuing with the sections explanations in declarative pipeline. So apart from that, there are other sections available in declarative pipeline. And what are those? The agent, there are different. So, so far now we have seen the agent like label, node, any, none. But apart from these kind of agent, there are several as well, which is reserved for the container services. And those are Docker, Docker file and Kubernetes. Now next option comes environments. Environments means which represents the key value pairs and the syntax something like that. Let's suppose that you need to define some credentials. The credentials it means that that is username and password based right. So username is the key and password is the value right. So environment you can define in the form of key and value and this is the valid syntax that that's how you can define the environment in particular pipeline. So basically this is the credentials and my predefined username and password is the credential ID. It stores user ID and password and that's how we are calling this particular uh, credential inside our pipeline script. Next some options. So pipeline is specific options within the pipeline itself and the something the syntax is coming something like this options disable concurrent builds. Next comes parameter. So parameter, it provides list of parameter that user uses when pipeline is triggered, right? So several things we can design under the parameters. Coming on to the point of scripted pipeline. So basically scripted pipeline, as we know that scripted pipeline works on traditional script in Groovy and execute steps from top to downwards. It means that the simply, when, is, when we say scripted pipeline, it means that simply the groovy language it means that whatever the groovy whatever the syntax comes under the groovy language the same syntax we can use in a scripted pipeline very simple you can also manage a scripted pipeline flow control with groovy exception handling support and this is the example like in the in the scripted pipeline i have told you right like uh, you need to first define the node and open close bracket however in declarative pipeline you need to define here the pipeline and open close bracket after that here you what you are not defining you don't need to define the steps you can simply define the stage and then you can define the command you don't need to define the steps 
So what is the difference you can understand here? Like you can say that declarative pipeline is much more easy to write and it is more structured than scripted pipeline. However, a scripted pipeline supports multiple complex queries because it thoroughly supports Groovy language, right? So in these options, you can try and catch and you can debug the particular options, a particular error as well in a scripted pipeline. Now, now the question comes guys, now you completely understand that what is the declarative pipeline, what are the sections comes under the declarative pipeline, we have gone through the definitions of the scripted pipeline, but the moment when we have to choose any one of them, which one we should choose, right, this is the biggest query and that's why we are going through this tutorial. So guys, both have its own significance, both have its own importance and it's hard to choose. But I will tell you some major, major difference and based on that, you can take your decision and you can decide whether you need to write your pipeline into the declarative or you should go with the scripted pipeline. Okay, so first, Groovy is the foundation of Jenkins pipeline. With the help of Groovy, a scripted pipeline provides advanced scripting capabilities for admin and users alike. As I told you guys, the scripted pipeline is thoroughly support the Groovy language. That's why you will have more options of your queries to write in the scripted pipeline. Scripted pipeline offers a tremendous amount of flexibility and extendability to Jenkins users. Obviously, because Groovy is quite old language, we have multiple, uh, we can say open source community which enhance the uh, Groovy language, right? And that keeps supporting various tools. A scripted pipeline has only limits which has Groovy language itself. So we can say that if I talk about the limitations, guys, there is only one limitation. Limitation in scripted pipeline, as I mentioned that the scripted pipeline is thoroughly supporting the Groovy language. So whatever the limitations comes with the Groovy language, the same limitations with the scripted pipeline. Now declarative pipeline provides more strict and predefined structure. When I say the predefined structure, it means that you have seen that there is steps pipeline, agent, stages, steps, and under the steps we are defining the command. So it is already there is a predefined structure, right? And basically this, this is designed, the declarative pipeline is designed for those users who are not much aware about the Groovy script, right? Those users who simply wants to write some simple pipeline script in some simple easy way, they have to write in declarative pipeline. They are not much aware. They are not well versed with the Groovy language. They should choose declarative pipeline. Okay guys, now so I am directly coming on to the conclusion. So wherever there is a complex requirements and your team is well versed with the Groovy language, you should go with the scripted pipeline. However, you are working in such environment where developers are not much well aware about the Groovy language. So you should go with the declarative pipeline because it is easy to write. It is uh, much structured rather than the scripted pipeline. The steps are quite clear. Anyone can easily guess what is written inside the pipeline. And it's my personal choice also. I prefer to write my pipeline into the declarative. So I suggest you, you try both and definitely you will like the declarative. So my personal suggestion, go for the declarative pipeline because it's new, it's predefined structure, it's very easy, crystal and clear. So that's all for the day guys. Thanks for watching it. If you have any queries, please don't feel shy. Write me in the comment sections. Your suggestions and feedback are always welcome and appreciated. I will see you in my next tutorial. Till the time, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe my channel and share it maximum with your friends and the colleagues. I will see you next tutorial. Till the time, stay tuned with the learning destinations for upcoming lecture. You have a good day guys.